yeah yeah like we've got like about 15 minutes and yeah if we don't cover everything this time i can also prepare a separate session next time to talk more about fermentation or about like yeah going into some of the the things about its relation to the microbiome okay cool so i can't remember what stimulated this but someone asked me to talk about um yeah food and the gut and uh, fermentation and you know your gut gut biome etc etc so um yeah i haven't really prepared anything sophie seems a little bit more prepared than i am so what i can maybe start with is um is yeah healthy nutrition you know everyone has their theories everyone has there's so many so much yeah so much information out there and yet how many really healthy people do you actually really meet with all this information out there who's really you know who's really doing it and is it because of a diet or is it because of you know yeah you know, what's what's really going on so i guess there's no um i guess everyone's got their their way of dealing with it ultimately um as a living entity like most living entities we are programmed with one basic survival strategy which is to survive to procreate to continue our genes to keep going to you know that that's what all of our cells that's what all of our genes are designed for it's to live and continue living until we've procreated and created more so that we can keep our genes going so we're designed to live we're designed to thrive we're designed to to you know to exist and really you know thrive so but you know um it's all about homeostasis. It's all about, you know, wherever we go, whatever we do, it puts some kind of stress onto our body and how our body deals with it, how it responds to it will kind of dictate, you know, um, yeah, how we move on. And obviously for some people um, or in some circumstances, certain uh, things that happen to us can create lots of mental trauma. And what have you and again that you know our body kind of reacts to that and it can lead to different pathologies uh so but if we just imagine that you know what we're looking at right now is more about uh how to fuel our physical body uh we can maybe in another time look at how we fuel our spiritual and our you know emotional body that's sort of equally important aspect of uh, of balance you know so I kind of held my tongue a little bit when you're talking about um, alliums, because in according to Tantra, uh, the, the, the alliums are actually toxic. All of them are. They intoxicate the mind. They intoxicate no. the brain. No. And which is why, you know, you'll find most people who do yoga, meditate, or, you know, uh, let's call that properly. Um, people who do original forms of yoga meditation, not necessarily what most of the world sees, don't touch onions at all. Um, the only time I have them is when I need them for medicine and bang, they work because they, they, they have a particular energetic uh, because they intoxicate the body. But what they also do is they have the ability to, um, you know, really stimulate certain things. Um, and really cleanse and they, they so they'll intoxicate the brain yeah garlic is the same they'll intoxicate the brain um which makes it feel oh, nice and kind but actually it's it's toxic it's it's intoxicating and um it slows you down and so you're not sharp and alert and full of life so um yeah but that's you know that's uh maybe a little bit extreme of an extreme view so when you're when you're doing real meditation uh, you notice it very 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 clearly like the other day i was teaching in bath in west and uh, my host actually already cooked something and she didn't know i didn't don't eat onions and quite literally all night long i had nightmares was, they, were, they weren't the worst nightmares in the world but and i never ever have nightmares unless people put onions and garlic and stuff like that in my food and then you really feel the effects of it. Anyway, that's a side side subject. So as you can tell, I'm just rambling. Um, we're talking about the gut. So how to balance 
our uh, our gut. So actually, if we look at our, our bodies, you know, the so there's certain fuel that we need to keep intaking. And depending on the type of fuel we put into our bodies will kind of dictate how our body absorbs that, how it makes use of that, and how it therefore responds. And, um, you know, quite often you'll see people put so much toxic things into their bodies. Um, and I, I kind of use the analogy, you know, if you had a Ferrari, you know, you had a really well-tuned, really amazing piece of engineering, would you put chip fat in there to kind of fuel it, to keep it going? Um, would you expect that the Ferrari will really purr, you know, having poured, you know, uncleaned chip fat into it? No, it won't. So why do you do the same to your body? Why do you expect the body will tolerate continuous abu abuse of, uh, of, you know, toxic substances and expect the body to be really sharp and alert and really full of life and really vital? So what we find is there's two, two key areas in terms of maintaining health and well-being. One is the gut and the other is the blood. So if we can keep a really balanced gut, uh, so how, and by balanced gut what we mean is having a good balance of uh, particular um, microbes and you know as we know the majority of our body is actually made up of foreign bodies of different uh, bacteria and things. So if we can keep those bacteria, you know, keep keep the level of those, uh, or keep, and there's, there's so many different types. If we can keep the good families in our gut, they really benefit because they help to process the food, break down our food, really, you know, break things down in such a way that it helps us to absorb minerals, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and that then feeds the rest of our system. It feeds our blood system. Uh, in, in fact, it feeds the whole of our system and just basically keeps us really you know, purring along. So if we keep upsetting that gut balance, uh, it doesn't it make sense that, you know, if we're not um, able to absorb all the nutrients from our food, that we're, you know, we're not going to get the nutrients we actually need, and therefore certain aspects of our well-being is going to be compromised. Um, another pattern that you see uh, very often is when people will, and and this is a, a you know, a, pretty much in every culture, people eat, uh, and, but some cultures are much stronger in this. People eat for the taste rather than thinking about it as being a fuel, you know, which you can also enjoy. So there's a difference between just having food for its taste and flavor uh, and just enjoying it compared to having food that actually fuels us really well that you can also enjoy. And uh, so when I go to certain countries, um, uh, you see that the way in which the food is prepared is prepared in such a way that you get really very little nutrients from the food. Not because the quality of the food isn't good. The quality is often organic. It's you know it's, uh, but the way in which it's prepared and the combinations of food really make it difficult. Um, and so, uh, actually, we're going off on a tangent here, really. But I, I'll let me just quickly finish this off, and then we'll get on to the the, the kind of uh, ferment where fermentation fits in. So um, if you imagine, we're, as human beings, we only have one stomach. We're not cows. We only have one stomach. So therefore, whatever we put into our mouths, whatever we swallow, just goes to one initial place, one stomach. And the only way that the stomach knows that the food that you put into your stomach has been processed is, or the way that it breaks it down is it, it kind of, first of all, you know, recognizes the food, it says, ah, there's an apple coming. Oh, yeah, I know what an apple is. You know, you can smell it. Oh, yeah, definitely an apple. I can smell that. I can feel it. Yeah, definitely an apple. Right into it. Oh, it tastes like an apple. Definitely an apple. All right, I need this much acid to be released into my system so that it can actually break the food down. And 
once uh, once the pH, so it's basically raised the pH in your stomach. Once the pH is kind of neutralized, then it says, ah, apple must be digested. All right, let it through. So then it lets it into your intestines. And as you know, you've got all the villi that then absorb the minerals from it and you know, it brings it into the, the bloodstream and all the rest of it. And you've got your minerals. Um, whatever is excess gets pooped out. Now, imagine if you had apples. Uh, so it, it takes a certain amount of acid to break that down. If you then eat, let's say, if you have nuts, let's imagine you have a salad. So you have greens, you have nuts, you have seeds, and you have apples in your salad, all mixed with some kind of salad dressing or something. Now you've got so many different things in there. The nuts and the seeds will take two to three hours to break down. The, uh, the greens will take maybe two hours or so, hour and a half maybe. The, um, yeah, the fruit will take about 45 minutes. But it's all mushed up, all combined, all into one stomach. So the body's right. I need this much acid. No, I need that much acid. Oh, no, I need this much acid, and so it's put some kind of an amount of acid in there. But the body, um, you know, basically, once the, the 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 pH has finally, you know, it's, it's sent lots of mixed messages. But once the pH is kind of balanced out, if one thing needs three hours to break down and it's only been in your stomach for an hour and a half and something else needed um yeah needed uh, uh 45 minutes but it's been in there an hour and a half what do you think is going to happen in your stomach what's going to happen to the stuff that needs longer to digest it's undigested it isn't broken down and the things that needed to, a lot longer basically, uh, or needed a shorter time, have over-digested. They, they, and so they effectively, they'll, when they get further into your gut, they'll start to ferment in your gut itself. And so it'll produce lots of wind. But either way, you don't get the nutrients from it. In both cases, you've, neg you, yeah, you've basically, you've lost all of those nutrients. So you've eaten all this food. And obviously it takes a certain amount of energy for your body to actually digest and process food. And, um, and you've used all that energy up and then you've only got a certain amount of energy out of it because the, you haven't got all the nutrients from your food. So the body says, oh, I haven't really got enough. Um, yeah, maybe I need some more food. So you start eating more and eating more and eating more. And that takes all of your energy away. So an easy way to to kind of see how well your 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 kind of your diet really is is uh, to look at um, you know how well do you sleep, how long do you sleep for, and when you wake, do you wake completely refreshed? Do you wake completely on it and sharp? You know, five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning, and you're like, wow, yeah, let's go, ready for the day, or do you like? Oh, uh, Oh, it's, oh, it's that, what, what day is it? I don't know. Well, uh, yeah. How do you wake? Um, after you eat, do you feel really sleepy as soon as you've eaten? You know, um, I mean, there, there's quite a few little factors that you can check to see how, how well your, your diet is, is actually going. Um, so, doo -doo -doo -doo. so I think Sophie's saying we've, we've pretty much run out of time already this um so i suggest we have a cliffhanger uh -huh. and we talk about how so what you need to do is dun, dun, dun. come back I'll next time to find time. out what to do yeah. <laughs> how to eat properly <laughs> but but seriously it's it's about you know once you've solved the the, the mystery of feeding the gut properly wow oh, you know anything is possible you're so full of life. There's no reason for an imbalance, a dis-ease, because you, you've fed the thing that continuously supplies you with nutrients and energy. If you're putting that in really neatly and you know, in really optimum amount of, you know, and this is for me, one of the beauties of a forest garden. 
once you start eating food from a forest garden exclusively from a forest garden you 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 and you eat in the right way in the right kind of order you end up uh you know, without any of these processed foods, there's none of this cashew butter and fake cheeses and vegan cheese and all this rubbish that why would anyone want to put that in their body? Sorry, but, um, you know, you, you just eat natural things that are straight from the garden, you know, straight from the, straight from the tree, straight into your mouth. And it's, you only need a small amount and you're full of vitality. And, um, yeah, I think we better leave it there because Sophie's going to start getting annoyed. Because we don't want to see Sophie when she's angry. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen Sophie angry. She's the most amazing person I've ever met. Um, <laughs> I was about to say, I don't think Sophie ever gets angry. <laughs> she doesn't oh, look it like happens, it. <laughs> it happens. There was a reason why I was enjoying beating the beans so much, I have to say, but yes. Yeah. Wonderful. But yeah, yeah, anyway, um, thinking about the gut and one of the ways of um, getting the gut balance right, as well as thinking about the order in which and how you cook your food, how you prepare your food, is fermentation, lacto-fermentation especially, because it encourages all the right kind of uh, bacteria in your stomach, which helps you to process food um, and helps you to yeah, digest your food properly. Uh, but we'll talk about that next time, I think. Yeah, I think next time we can speak more about the microbiome, like how they exist in the digestive system throughout all our body. Um, and yeah, like how fermentation can support that, to have more diversity and stability in the body. Okay, lovely. Thank you, Rakesh. So maybe we'll stop the recording and we can have a quick checkout.